Well, here we are in Chiang Rai. Today we are going out to the Golden Triangle, an area that has been infamously known for opiate production, the opium trade, also human trafficking, just everything to do with the drug trade as well, to be honest with you. So it's going to be interesting to see an area where three borders all meet. We've made it to the Golden Triangle. It's got Lao over there, Myanmar just there, and then Thailand. Little boat down there, could he be doing a drag around? <laughs> All the Laos is casinos. They should call it Laos Vegas. There was lots of these little shops along the street that were selling things like bracelets and also different opium pipes. Just down from the Golden Triangle Temple is these two big elephants you can get some photos with, so we had to get some snaps with them. We then walk down to the Golden Triangle Temple.
This massive golden Buddha makes for a picturesque scene by the river. There she is, the golden triangle. There is so many places you can stop and get a photo at the Golden Triangle. It's pretty incredible to see this area and especially just how close everything is to one another. I had expected that the river would have been a bit bigger and wider and honestly you could you could swim across this with no struggle. It definitely makes sense why this has been such an easy area for drugs to be moved from one border across to another and still is today. After visiting the Mekong River and the Golden Triangle it was time to go see the House of Opium Museum. This map is just showing the Mekong River and the surrounding areas. Around these mountainous areas near the Golden Triangle is where a lot of opium poppy has been grown in the past. The white areas represent the most dense area where opium has been produced in the past. Through this video there will be some photos like this. If you wish to read them you want to pause when you see one. Alright, bear with me as I try and summarise a bit of the brief history of opium and where it kind of originated and travelled around the world from. So it dates back to around the 4000 BC, where it was found near Swiss Lake. Then in 2100 BC, it was found uh, mentioned in the Sumerian clay tablet referencing opium. Then the Egyptian medical records called Ebus Papyrus in the 1550 BC mentioned opium. Pharaoh Tutankhamun had his people cultivate opium around 1300 BC. There's been Greek relics that have been found with opium on Cyprus Island dating to 1100 BC. This shows the trade of opium. Opium shows up in Greek poetry around 460 BC. Opium then moved to the Middle East and India around 350 BC. Then it was traded along the Silk Road by the Indians and the Chinese. And uh, eventually it gained mass interest from the West around the 18th century. During that time, it was then cultivated here around the Golden Triangle, and then through different trade agreements, it was given to the French or the British, and it basically just went all throughout Europe. This shows you the life cycle of poppy seed all the way through to opium being collected.
These are various tools used in the process of making opium. These knives here are used to cut the opium poppy and then the latex will seep out from the opium poppy and is gathered with the scrapers and then once gathered it was stored in these little containers. Apparently the best position to smoke opium in. I can tell you a lot of heroin addicts would disagree. I found this really interesting, so hopefully I've done it some justice here in capturing it. This is an agricultural calendar. This shows you basically the cultivation techniques and habits of the different tribes around Thailand. This is another agricultural calendar showing the process of making opium and growing the opium poppy around the Golden Triangle area. Set of weights and scales. These little weights were really incredible. There was a huge variety of shapes and sizes. And basically, the different styles and shapes have evolved over different times and cultures and periods where opium has been used and traded. And during these different times, they've had, you know, the mainstream shape was, you know, a bird or a rooster here, and then it's changed into something else from there. So it's really interesting to see how opium has evolved with times and also with culture just you can see that in the whites. My apologies from here, there was a very, very loud Chinese tourist group that were not very considerate of other people in the museum. So we will have most of the volume quite quiet, but I will have it raised up when I say something that's important.
There was this large weight here so that you could have an attempt at lifting and feeling quite how heavy it was. It was interesting how heavy there actually was for such a compact weight. Yeah, there definitely is quite a good chunk of weight in there. Press pause if you wish to read about the opium lamp. All these old pipes were phenomenal to see. Just the craftsmanship that's gone into each and every one of them. Well, it's official, guys. We have found Thailand's headiest head shop. <laughs> we got a Joe P, we got a Darby. We got <laughs> oh. Some of the craft that goes into these pipes though, it's ridiculous. Press pause if you wish to read about the opium pipe. Press pause if you wish to read about the opium pillow, the world's most uncomfortable pillow. It's apparently a pillow. If you didn't know, various derivatives from opium are what makes up most of the pharmaceutical market today. Press pause to read a bit about the opium wars. Upstairs there is another section to the museum that is often missed. This shows you a bit of history about the Mekong River, the gigantic catfish that exist within the Mekong River, and also the various tribes around the areas of the Golden Triangle. Originating from melting ice in the Himalayan range in the Tibet, the Mekong River flows to the east passing China, Myanmar, Laos, Thailand, Cambodia and Vietnam, with a length of approximately 4,900 kilometers the tenth longest river in the world is the third widest river in Asia after only the Yangtze, Kiang and Ganges. Some sections of the Mekong River are dangerous for boat and ship navigation because of rocks. The dry seas and the water level can fall so low that these rocks make passage impossible. Old drawings show that many labourers were needed to drag a boat through rocky sections of the river. The Mekong River has some deep basins with caves at the bottom. These are known as the Wang Plabyuk or Plabyuk basins, giant catfish basins. That's the area we're in. Guess that's the Mekong from there. Look at this gigantic fish. 
Could you imagine pulling that thing into a boat that size? I swear you would tip the boat once that thing got in the boat. This section shows the various traditional wear of the Thai tribes that were around the mountainous areas. This is a small section of a neck ring that has been stretched out. These are the full neck rings. These neck rings are worn by the women in some of the Karen tribes. Press pause to read about these neck rings. Lastly, we have a bit more of the history of pipes. This was particularly more so about tobacco and cannabis pipes. But it was really cool to see the evolution of pipes and then how they've evolved into water pipes, which we nowadays know as bongs. A bit of the history of bongs here. Look at this thing. And this one too. If anyone wondered where water pipes come from, it's the East Asian culture. traditional types of pipes. Terracotta tobacco pipes.
there you go guys that's a bit of a walk through the house of opium museum and the golden triangle thank you for sticking with us till the end of this video you're a legend for watching it all thank you for watching our videos if you enjoyed please like the video and be sure to subscribe to our channel